Good morning, everybody. The time has come. It's time to get back on the road. We have a load waiting for us, taking us to Texas. So last year for Christmas, Britt bought me a gift certificate to get this pickup truck completely detailed. Like, everything. And I haven't used it yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna use it now, after this Christmas. So I'm bringing the pickup here to my detail guy. I'm gonna leave the truck with him while I'm on this trip. And when I come back from this trip, this thing will be nice and spotless inside. And when we get back, I'm gonna give him a good shout out and show you his work. His name is Dion Schrader. He's from Steinbach here. He works at the Detail and Glass Company. We always get him to detail our vehicles. He does such a good job. Believe me, you'll be impressed when you see it. So stick around, make sure you subscribe. Just backing into my spot here where it'll be out of the way hit the fence but I want to get close to the fence behind me there we go right on all right we haven't named you pickup but uh, you're gonna look a lot better and feel a lot better soon all right we are getting all blue loaded up this is from yesterday that we replaced yesterday forgot to do this we will do the honors right now this is the one that didn't work anymore. Ha! Where you belong. All right. Getting everything else into the truck here. Got some buns here that my mom made. Uh-huh, home cooked. The best. All right, Blue, let's make sure you're all good to go. I already know you are, but we're gonna double check anyway, all right. We're going on a bit of a longer one this time. Oh, and looking out the door behind me, it just began to snow. Fantastic. Oh man, we gotta get going. Blue, we gotta get going. Oh, give me your hood. Come on, come on, open up, girl. Come on. There you go. All right. Oh, we'll get you washed soon, don't worry. trees in Laredo I hope there's palm I bet you we're gonna see palm trees on this trip those of you who know me know I really love palm trees check this out my wife and I got matching tattoos see that's how much I love them this isn't complete yet I want to finish it off eventually but I take them with me everywhere I go that's how uh, how much I love them because to me when I see palm trees, I think of good memories, good times, vacation, warm weather, no snow, just happiness. The first palm trees I saw were when I was on the truck with my dad when I was a kid, around eight years old. We were in a 97 Freightliner FLD. It was blue. It was 
like this one actually, just thought of that. And we had a load down to California. And on the way down to California, that's where I saw my very first in real life palm trees. Now to some of you that might not be very exciting, but for a Canadian from Manitoba, seeing a real palm tree in a, like its natural environment, that's exciting. So uh, ever since then, whenever I see palm trees, it's like a feeling of happiness that washes over me. So let's go see if we can find some. I got some good news though. The wind is coming out of the north, so it's bad news for Manitoba because it's about to get cold. Good news for me because I'm gonna put out my sails and let the wind take me all the way down to Texas. A lot of trucks home for the holidays. I am looking for 602 roll tide. I think that's the one right there, the second one from the left. 602 TLR, that's the one. Everything should be tied down already. I just need to double check it, verify that it's all tied down according to my standard. I'm sure it'll be good. And we'll be out of here. We're ready to go. All blue, all the way down to Texas. So I just gotta make sure that my fifth wheel isn't too far forward. Usually I haul uh, flatbeds or open deck, which has the kingpin further forward under the trailer. So I have my fifth wheel further forward to move more of my weight onto my steers. If that makes sense to you, great. If not, I can explain it another time. So I'm gonna make this little corner right here. I gotta check to see how close this corner here is gonna get to my headache rack here. I think I'm gonna have to move my fifth wheel back. Oh, it is pretty far back already though. I can move it back about another six inches. I'm gonna move forward a little bit more and turn sharp until we're pretty much at a complete angle. Very, very slowly. Come with me. We wanna protect the truck. Okay, so we're at a little bit more of an angle now. It's coming pretty close, eh? So you gotta remember, if I go up a driveway and the truck goes up, or I go down a driveway onto a flat surface, this part is gonna come close together up here, right? And I don't want that hitting my headache rack there. So let's get a little bit more of an angle. Let's get this LED light about centered with that white box there, and we'll see what we're working with. close for comfort for me actually that does not give a lot of space for like I, like I was saying like look at the truck how it is now right if I'm coming out of a steep driveway out of a truck stop down 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 onto a flat surface road the truck goes flat but the trailer is still angled like this right so the trailer then the top of the trailer comes in towards the truck and it doesn't have much space at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my fifth wheel back just to be safe. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't wanna risk hitting it. Cause uh, it's exponentially cheaper to move the fifth wheel back for a trip than to fix a dented headache rack. So inside my truck here, what I do is I set the trailer brakes. I'll, I'll straighten out first. And then I have this little button here right here. I push this button and it's powered by air, air pressure. Air pressure will then be shot out to my fifth wheel pins that are holding it in place and it'll suck them in, making the fifth wheel loose. Then I pull the trailer brakes, I move the truck forward, fifth wheel slides to the back and then I release the air again and those pins go, they shoot out. Then I got to make sure they're locked in there. I'll see if I can show you. I'm going to put you guys on this little barrier right here so you can see what I'm doing. I'll show you how I slide my fifth wheel. The fifth wheel, for those of you who aren't into trucking, is that right there with the trailers resting on where the kingpin locks into my truck. That's called a fifth wheel. Why do they call it a fifth wheel? Ask Google, I don't know. Someone told me once. To me, it's, why do they call it a fifth wheel? Because it's a fifth wheel. That's my answer for you. If you want a more in-depth answer, Google is your friend. I'm sorry, I can't help you right now. We got things to teach you or show you how I do it anyways. 
always double check what I do, okay? Don't take what I say as gospel, please. Always double check, always double check. I am open to being wrong about things, okay? Sometimes I gotta learn things too. I learn new things every day, so. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's try to slide this thing. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll my dollies down, my trailer legs. Roll them down and push the trailer up just a little bit to take pressure off the fifth wheel so it's easier to slide because right now it's got all that weight sitting on it. My load is only 6,000 pounds. The whole thing in there, 6,000 pounds. That's it. It's going to be a beautiful trip all the way down to Texas. I'm going to take the weight off of it, and drop my airbags, take a little bit more weight off of it, and it'll be easy to slide. You'll see. Whoa, whoa. First things first, gloves. You don't want your hands to freeze. Now that I've got the trailer legs down on the ground, you just have to put them firmly on the ground. You don't have to like rack it, ratchet it up, pull it up. Let the airbags do the work for you on the truck. So now what I'm gonna do, since those are touching the ground, I'm gonna release the air in my airbags in my truck. That'll lower the frame of my truck, along with the trailer, down onto those legs, taking the weight off the fifth wheel. Then I'm gonna push that little button in the cab I told you about. That's gonna release those pins, hopefully. Hopefully, sometimes in the cold weather, they're a little stubborn. And you gotta whack them with a hammer to show them who's boss. But hopefully they know who's boss already, so they'll work properly. We'll, we'll see, sometimes it's a little bit of fun. You gotta get a little violent sometimes, okay? What? So, uh, watch that right there. You'll see my frame go down. You'll hear those pins. You might hear those pins because you can hear the air usually. I'm gonna spike the trailer brakes so that they're locked, and then I'm gonna try moving the trailer, the truck forward, and the trailer should stay there. So as you can see, sometimes the ice and snow plays a factor in that as well, makes things difficult for you. As a truck driver, it's not just your job to deliver freight, it's your job to problem solve and fix these things in whatever weather conditions you're in. Today we're in Manitoba winter weather and we have to slide the fifth wheel. Ice is a part of it. So you did see it slide, right? You saw it slide, it's at the back now. I tried to wiggle a little bit further to make sure it was all the way at the back. I had some tires spinning there, I locked my axles together. Uh, so that they, they, they're powered all both axles instead of just one. Usually there's just one one axle powering it. Story for another time. Lock them up, pulled forward. It looks like we're at the back now. So the what that'll do, that'll give me more space between the truck and trailer there, you see, for turns. And it'll also move weight off my steer tires on the front of my truck onto the drives of my truck. So since we're only at 6,000 pounds gross in the trailer, I'm not worried about weight. We'll be just fine. Another reason you want to have your trailer hugged up close to your truck if you can is for fuel economy. But I'm driving a W900. What's fuel economy? So coming up a little closer here, these are those pins that I told you about. Those have to lock in. And you can tell, see I dropped the, the bags on the truck. There's a little bit of gap in there, but the pin is still locked in. That makes it easier to slide. All right. Well, I could still go back about another four inches. I'll see if I can get it to go like another couple of inches back. Though I think we're pretty good already. But I think that's pretty good. Maybe I should just leave it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to see if I can get another couple of inches back. It's all the way back. Slam it back. Stretch it out. We're gonna have fun. So you saw I was able to get it moving again, right? The trick to do that, if you're spinning out, I had I didn't have enough weight on my tires, right? Remember, I put that little gap in there. What I did was I inflated the airbags again till it started pushing up on the trailer. That starts pushing down on the tires, gave me some traction, and I was able to move it a little bit further. And now we got it all the way to the back, and now we have to lock those pins in. So I'm gonna go and press that button again, and it'll lock in. 
So in here we have warnings. You see there's a red light on there and there's also a bell dinging at me to make sure that I know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, that my fifth wheel isn't locked yet. Okay, so I'm gonna press that button and I'm gonna show you those pins going in. Keep your eye on that pin there. So you saw it move a little bit, right? It's gotta go all the way in. The way we do that is we gotta wiggle the truck back and forth and convince it, do a little bit of convincing. She's an old beast. So I can't have you on my fender while I'm shaking the truck back and forth because I don't want you guys to get hurt. Okay, and fall off my truck. Dropped you guys several times in the past and I am grateful that you've forgiven me every time and that you're still here. So those things are locked now, right? So now with the trailer brake spike, I'm just gonna give it a little bit, rock the truck back and forth to rock those things and shake them into place. Like I said, it's an old beast. She needs a little bit of love. She wants to know that you care. You're paying attention. Okay. A little bit of wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And this way. Wiggle, wiggle. Come on, old blue. Come on, you got it. Sometimes it needs a little more convincing than that, but let's see if that did the trick. Oh, I need some more convincing. Okay. Okay. So, then what I do, like I said, you're not just a truck driver, you're a problem solver in all other conditions. The problem right now is my pins on my fifth wheel are being stubborn. That's okay, they do this every time. Very stubborn, just like me and my son. Stubborn. Okay. So, we're gonna release the air in the fifth wheel again by uh, pressing that button, right? Oh, this dash is dusty. I shouldn't have shown you that. Okay, and now we're going to go back a little bit. Release the brakes. That always helps. Back a little bit. Just a bit. Lock them again. Come on. yet I'm not even mad yet okay don't look at me like that you know what you're supposed to do sometimes you just gotta sweet talk them a little bit you know these old trucks they uh you know they're old and tired they like to feel appreciated you gotta give them a little, a little nudge nudge a little yeah you're good give them a little pet yeah good boy still got it but you still got it now work air down in my bags release that again so I'm bringing the truck frame back down releasing those pins again I'm gonna slide the fifth wheel a little bit get it juiced up and then <laughs> fire those pins in somewhere else they didn't want to go in there oh here we go there we go oh come on don't do that to me okay okay did it that oh but I'm way too far forward now see the pins are in now <laughs> we're back where we started okay well that one was on me can't get mad at blue for that one I was moving it back and forth and I guess I forgot to move it back to the back 
All right, cable, that was my fault, okay? This is a team effort here. Team effort, come on. We wanna go to Texas. All right, all right, all right. Put the bags back down, release that again. Spike this again. Come on. All right, there's the back. We're at the back again. Okay. Now just a little bit forward. Oh, right there, right there, right there, right there. Right there. Boom. Okay. 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 Lift the bags up. What's this? And you gotta fiddle with it. Oh. <laughs> Okay. How many tries is this? The last one was on me. Yeah. This one, I'll see. Did you lock in, Blue? I want to go. Yes! Yes! There we go. See, it's locked in, and we're pretty much all the way at the back. It's far back. Uh, so we could go back another inch, but that's fine. It is fine just like that. We're locked in. Now, don't forget to go check the passenger side, too. I've been worried about the driver's side this whole time. What am I gonna find on this side, Blue? What am I gonna find here? Are you gonna be locked in? Huh? Huh? Yes, you are. We're locked in on this side as well. Okay, good. We're locked and loaded. I see a bungee at the end here, hanging off the end of my trailer. What's going on here? What are you doing back here, bud? What are you doing, bud? What are you doing here? Hello, my friend. What are you? What is your purpose? What? It, what is? I, I guess it's to. Uh, um, I'm guessing it's to for extra. Extra. Like that. Huh. That's what that's for. There's none on this side. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so I tried to lift this rear axle because I don't want to drag three axles down the road if I don't have to. Did I put the axle down or did I put it up? I thought I put it up. Why isn't it going up? Right? Oh, it's up. It's up, it's just barely. It'll go up as we go down the road. Okay, let's roll this landing gear back up. You can't forget about that. That'd be embarrassing. Rip those landing gear off and you can't put the trailer down at all. Then you gotta keep the trailer forever. Which I wouldn't mind. I kinda like these roll tights. I would just want it my own. I would want my own, which is a little would be a little bit nicer. This one's nice, this one's nice. I'm just saying if I had my own, it'd be a little bit nicer. I'm just saying. A little bit more lights and chrome. That's a much better gap. I don't gotta worry about nothing then. Trailer 602 TLR. You are married to Old Blue for the next week or so. Maybe more. Everything is done, complete. Just going over my paperwork now. I'm looking at my delivery point on uh, Google Maps here. I'm delivering literally like a couple of streets away from the Rio Grande. I'll be able to see Mexico. Well, it's gonna be a nighttime delivery, so I won't be able to. But you get what I mean, I'll be within sight of Mexico. I haven't been that close to Mexico in a long time. Just to show you a quick look inside the trailer, what we're working with here. So that's all it is, and it doesn't even go that far. About two thirds of the trailer. All right. Oh boy. It's the way the sun's hitting this, I can see the dust more. Oh boy, oh boy. All right. Get more of that later. Okay. Turn the CB on. All aboard. On our way to Texas. Oh, and what a way to start with a cyclist. In the wintertime, these cyclists, man. Right through the stop sign. 
Uh huh. You gotta share the road with them, but you don't gotta share the rules of the road, apparently. In 400 meters, turn right on Highway 59. Uh, we're going to be driving into the night tonight. We don't have to go as far today. We can do more uh, tomorrow and the next day. Double, triple check to make sure I had the right trailer. I don't want to get all the way down to the Mexico border and find out that I grabbed the wrong trailer. I'm sure they'd noticed before then, but <laughs> that's a mess. That is a mess to clean up.
not too sure how long I'll be driving yet. I have what, nine and a half hours available to me left to drive, plus a half hour break, so I could work for another 10 hours or so. I got the wind at my back. I got my new headlights to light the way once the sun goes down. And way in front of us, far ahead, very, very small on the horizon. I see palm trees. We're gonna keep driving till we see them. Till they get a little bit bigger. They're a little bit small right now, way out there. We're just south of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. There's a Casey's with about 10 parking spots and I think there's one here for me. I'm tired. We've been traveling about 500 miles today, 800 Initial kilometers. Turn left on 469th Avenue, CR 111. No, Karen, we're going to go to bed. I'm tired. I have 2,000 kilometers, actually 2,007 kilometers left. Or 1,200 miles left to Laredo. And I've got three days to do that in. So I think we can call it a night here. I see most people are facing this way. They're pull through spots, so I'm gonna pull through the other way like that tanker did. So that my cab is on the other side from these guys' cabs. I think there's one spot right on the end. Nope, there's not. Oh wait, yes there is. There we go. I just realized I've got a straight note. I couldn't see these lines. I mean, he's not straight in his spot. I lined myself up with this guy, but this guy's not straight. I think I'll probably just move over a spot to here. That way I can be straight in there. Either way, I'll get myself straightened out. And we're shutting down here. South of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. There's the lights of the city right there. Another 1,200 miles that way. Try to get another 600 done tomorrow. Or another 1,000 kilometers. I gotta straighten out, this is driving me nuts.